Hello and welcome back to another week of meals. I have some really yummy ones this time. It's starting off with some cheeseburger egg rolls. That's right. I am making a cheeseburger filling with some ground beef here. This was pre-cooked and stuck in the fridge, so I'm just kind of warming it through on the stove top. Adding the seasonings. Again, if you're new here, all of the recipes, if I have a link for them, will be down below in the description box. Got some Worcestershire, some Dijon mustard, and prior to that, we have the onion soup mix, just mixing that through. As per usual, I'm going to stir it all up, give it a little bit of a taste, and adjust if I feel like it needs something a little bit different. I added a little bit of Worcestershire, some more Dijon mustard, um, and then the rest of the onion soup mix. So that's pretty much how I um, fixed it to my preferred taste. Once that's all mixed through, I'm going to add the last couple ingredients here. We have some mayo and some shredded sharp cheddar cheese. Mix, mix, mix. I'm gonna give it a taste in a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside to cool a little bit so that I can prep uh, for the assembly of the egg rolls. While that filling is cooling, I'm gonna fill up a shallow pan here with some vegetable oil. I think this is canola, but any sort of neutral sort of frying oil will work. Um, so that gets up to temp. In the meantime, I'm taking my egg roll wrappers. These were frozen, they had been frozen. Um, so they're a little bit discolored here. You saw a little bit earlier, I showed you a little bowl, a bowl of water, and that's just gonna act as a little sealer, a little glue as I assemble these going to take a cookie scoop and um, I'm going to put two big scoops in more or less the middle. You can see how I assemble it here. Do a bit of a fold and then um, seal everything with a bit of that water. just a little dab of water you don't need a whole lot um, it basically will just stick everything together and seal it through and then I will set that aside and make the rest of the egg rolls the finished egg rolls I got about I think nine of them uh, with the meat that I had and I think it was about a pound or so of ground beef um, now here is the oil heated up to temp I'm taking my little spider here and putting the egg rolls in you're going to want to cook these about a couple minutes or so until each side is nice and golden brown. You're basically just cooking the egg roll wrapper um, and you'll see here in just a little bit, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a flip and you can kind of see the, the finished color. So here we go. In a little bit, I'm gonna switch to uh, some tongs that worked a little bit easier than the this spider here. I'm not really sure why I selected this <laughs> implement, this tool to begin with, but here we go. That is a nice golden brown. Um, I'm going to remove it from, remove the egg rolls from the oil. I'm going to set them to cool. You can kind of see a little bit of the, um, that little silver, I don't know what you call it, um, I call it a, a grate <laughs> of some sort, cooling rack, I guess you could say. I'm just gonna um, set them on there so that they stay nice and crisp. And I'll just continue cooking the rest of the egg rolls until those are nice and done as well.
go, don't those look so good? Who doesn't love a fried wonton or egg roll wrapper? So this is what it looks like on the inside. It's kind of nice and creamy with that mayo and the cheese. I made a little dip here. Um, it, the ingredients are in the link down below. It's basically all the fillings you'd put in a cheeseburger, um, some more mayo, mustard, ketchup. You can put some relish in there if you'd like. I'm just doing a little dip here. Served this with some freezer or frozen french fries that I stuck in the air fryer and that was our dinner for the first night of this week. Next meal is the chili that I like to make. I will link this below. Lots of ingredients, totally worth it though, however. Um, two secret ingredients we have here, some beer and some dark coffee. Um, the beer, I usually use Guinness, but this is what we had. A, a nice dark beer is really good, but I decided to go ahead and use what we had. Um, starting off here with some olive oil, I'm going to um, sort of cook down uh, the aromatics, the onion and the garlic and some nice neutral oil. Actually, I think that's olive oil, so maybe not so neutral. There is a bit of a flavor with olive oil. Um, so here we go here. And then I do believe I have another old video where I show exactly how I do this with measurements. If I find that, I will either link that down below or put it up in the cards up above. Um, but here I'm just kind of giving you an overview of how I do the chili. Adding the chopped up, not chopped up, cut up sirloin into the pot and I'm going to just basically brown that. I will season it a little bit. I do like to season layers, um, but try not to overdo it because you can't really take away the salt if you over season it. Um, but I do like to season as I go through. So just a little bit at a time. Once the sirloin is brown, um, it's not going to be fully cooked through, uh, but the, you know this is going to simmer basically on the stovetop for quite a while. Not worried about that cooking through. I'm adding some ground beef now, um, just making sure that gets broken up, and then I'm going to cook that until that's nice and brown as well. Now the way I'm cooking it will deviate a bit from the link that I have down below in the description box. Uh, however, the original recipe is delicious. Um, there is one adjustment that, or one comment I have about the original recipe, but um, these days I just kind of wing it based on how I like. So I had added some diced tomatoes. I'm adding some tomato sauce. I'm just gonna stir that through. I'm adding some beef broth here and some chili sauce. Again, I just do everything to taste, so that's why I don't really measure anymore. Here's that coffee. Um, a little bit of a note, I have used instant espresso before and that works really, really well. Uh, cocoa powder, another secret ingredient. And then I go in with the beer. Um, I decide to mix it around and then I'm gonna add the rest of the beer to that. So again, just adjusting to how I like it to taste. Time for some spices. We have some coriander, I believe that's cumin, um, and then we're gonna go in with a bit of oregano, I believe. <laughs> Again, ingredients uh, for the recipe will be linked below. Some chili powder here, and then I'm also going to add some sweetener. Now, I'm using monk fruit, and this is the bit of a note that I wanted to mention. The recipe calls for a lot of sugar. Um, 
if you'll read the comments in the original recipe, people will mention that it is way too sweet. So I would start off with a tiny bit of sweetener if you even want to add a bit of sweetness, but start with a little bit and then add more if you want. Uh, and then that last bit with some cayenne there, I'm just gonna stir this up, make sure it's all mixed through, give it a smell to see if all the spices are in there that I need to be. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of tomato uh, paste here to thicken it up as it cooks. So again, just one final stir, and then I'm gonna give that, uh, I'm gonna cover it and then kinda just let it simmer. Um, and then I want to make sure all of the components are cooked, basically the sirloin and the ground beef before I actually give it an actual taste. Um, so I'm gonna cook that for a little bit. After it's been simmering away for a tiny bit, I do go ahead for a taste test. You can see um, the meat is definitely cooked through now. I'm gonna stir it up and then give it a taste. At this point, everything tastes really good. I'm just gonna, again, just lower the heat just a, even a little bit more just to let it simmer through. As it cooks um, over the, the length of time, it, I probably let it cook for about an hour or so, um, the flavors are gonna mellow. So you wanna taste it again and then adjust. I did add some more chili sauce um, and a, a bit more spice, uh, some of the spices, but you can see it's thickened up nicely with that tomato sauce I served with some shredded cheddar and some sour cream would be good with bread and that was the next meal of the week this one is super duper easy I'm just doing sort of a Korean style ground beef over rice with some veg so I'm taking some ground beef that hasn't really been defrosted I forgot to take the meat out of the freezer so I'm just gonna do my quick little actually it's not super quick it does take a bit of time but I'm gonna defrost it over the stovetop um, and this is probably about oh gosh I don't know maybe a pound and a half or so of some ground beef I'll cover this a bit and then defrost it and kind of scrape the cooked bits as I go Once the ground beef is fully cooked, I'm going to go ahead and add the Yoshida's Original Gourmet Sweet and Savory, basically like a sauce marinade. Um, you can put as much or as little of this as you like. It's very sweet, so this is not super keto or low carb friendly, but um, I am going to serve this with some veg and some rice, just keeping it real simple tonight. Um, and here we go. This is what it looks like all served up. It's really, really good and so, so easy. You can do this with um, ground, ground chicken. You can do it with chicken. You can do it with, um, you know, I don't know if you have like um, some other cut of beef would be really good. Uh, anything really that you have uh, just served with some steamed broccoli here. Again, I have basmati rice there and that was the third meal of the week. Next up, we have a Pizza Hut dupe or a copycat recipe. I'm starting off uh, with some sugar and water. Recipe will be down below. I deviated a bit uh, with the yeast portion of it. I like to do my water first and the, with the sugar so that I have some food for the yeast. I mix that up a little bit and then I'm going to put the yeast. I try to avoid putting the salt in at the very beginning um, because I find sometimes the yeast doesn't rise with the salt so 
here's the yeast here just given a little uh, little coaxing here so that it gets all of the water and some of the sugar there and then I'm just gonna watch that as I make sure the yeast is still viable this has been in the fridge for a bit so I wanted to make sure the yeast was still working You can see that the yeast is a sort of rising and the little bits of bubbles coming up and here we're speeding it up just to show you. Yes, it's alive. So the yeast is good and we can continue. I'm adding some dry non-fat powdered milk here and then we've got some oil. This is just regular, I think it's canola oil that I'm adding um, to this part of the uh, the recipe and here's a little sprinkle of the salt um, I'm gonna add some of the flour now I just do it about a cup or so I think is what the recipe calls for I'm going to mix that up so that everything gets mixed and then I will add the flour about a cup at a time until it's all ready and set to go you might want to do a bit of scraping as you add the flour just to make sure everything gets mixed through um, so that's what I'm doing here. As I'm mixing here, I notice it's a bit dry, so I am going to add a tiny bit of water a little bit at a time so it gets to a good consistency. Here we go, it's just a teeny bit of water. And I'm gonna mix that through and see what that looks like. Once I'm happy with the dough, I remove it and then I'm going to just kind of form it into a ball. I'm going to divide it into two, uh, two pieces here. One that's slightly larger because the container and the pan um, on my on my right is slightly larger than my cast iron so I'm trying to do that here uh, it doesn't really matter though you just divide it in two the recipe calls for three separate pans but I didn't have three so I'm just using a real big one and my cast iron and here we go uh, once I have formed the little balls I'm going to roll it out this dough rolls out really really well um, it doesn't bounce back on itself so it makes it really nice and pliable and you can really roll it out to the size and the shape that you want. I'm just giving it a little flip here and then I'm really just going to stretch it out. It works so well this dough, I really like it um, and I'm very happy with the way the pizza tur pizzas turned out. So I'm just kind of um, going to stretch it out here to make sure it's big enough and roll out the edges so that everything's more or less even. Okay, here's the bit that makes it really like the pan pizzas from Pizza Hut. You're going to add some oil to the bottom of your pan and that is going to crisp up the bottom and, you know, makes it nice and greasy just like those actual original pan pizzas. So I'm swirling it around. I'm going to take my finger and kind of well, add a little bit more here. I'm going to just make sure that I don't miss any spots and then I'm going to transfer the, uh, the pizza dough into the quote unquote pie pan. This is actually... It's quite a large cake pan, I'm not really sure <laughs> how large it is, maybe a 12 inch pan. It's pretty big, but um, make sure that covers the bottom. And then I'm going to set that aside and go to the cast iron and do the same thing with that. While all of that was happening, I was preheating my oven to 170 uh, for about 10 minutes or so uh, to warm it up. I'm covering the uh, pans here with some foil because this is going to go into those into the oven now. It's been turned off, 
uh, just to keep it nice and warm and to let the dough rise. So I am using foil instead of plastic wrap as the recipe suggested because the oven is a bit warm. I did let the oven cool a little bit because it seemed like it was going to be too hot for it to put in immediately after I turned off the oven. But here we go. It's just going to go and rise per the recipe. Once it has, I let it rise for about an hour. I think it says an hour, an hour, hour to an hour and a half. Um, but here you go. This is what it looks like. It's puffed up quite a bit. Can't really tell because of the edges of the pan. They're um, they're high. But um, I'm gonna go in with the toppings now and just kind of dress my pizzas. Um, just using some traditional Hunt's pasta sauce. Uh, in lieu of pizza so a pizza sauce. I couldn't find any pizza sauce at the store, which was really weird. So I'm just doing regular old uh, tomato pasta sauce. This larger one is Collins, so I'm keeping it super plain. I'm gonna put a little bit of Parmesan cheese down before I put the mozzarella. He just likes plain cheese pizza, um, and so that's what I'm gonna do here is just add that uh, shredded mozzarella cheese. Moving on to the parental pizza, we are doing, uh, again, just the tomato pasta sauce here. And then I'm gonna do more parm, uh, just like I did on the cheese pizza. Mozzarella cheese. kick it up with some oregano for our sophisticated adult palates <laughs> and then we have some pepperoni mushrooms here a little bit of parmesan cheese to act as a glue between the quote-unquote layers of the toppings I have some diced green bell peppers and then I'm gonna add a little bit more tiny bit of cheese on top of that so that the uh, olives we've got black olives so those uh, kind of quote-unquote stick <laughs> cooked the pizzas per the instructions and this is what the cheese pizza looks like once it's out of the oven. I'm just kind of making sure that it's not going to stick as I try to remove it. I'm just taking a spatula and doing it that way. And then I'm going to go underneath and make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. Try to slide that guy right out onto um, well, I have it on a, a baking sheet, <laughs> but if you have a large cutting board, you can do it on that, obviously. The crust is nice and thick, just like you would expect a pan pizza. Got a bit of that burnt sauce and cheese um, on the side. I'm going to slice it up here to show you what it looks like on the inside. Um, and it is, again, nice and thick. I don't know if you caught a peek of the bottom, but it's also nice and brown. And look how thick that is, nice and fluffy and airy, and I tell you, this pizza looked and tasted just like a Pizza Hut pan pizza. I would 100% make it again. The cast iron version um, came out of the pan a lot easier. It was nice and like non-stick, so um, you can see. And it turned out a bit thicker, actually, because of the way um, I, think, I think I put a little bit more dough in. So it is nice and super duper thick. Look at that. It's, it rose about it. It's about an inch thick. I'm going to slice it up and show you what it looks like on the inside. Um, nice and crisp crust um, and greasy, <laughs> just like the Pizza Hut ones. Uh, really, really good pizza. 100% making this again. I really liked it. Rob liked it. Um, Colin liked it. He does like a thin pizza a little bit better, um, but he said it was good. Actually, his word was fine. It's fine. <laughs> so I'll take that as a win. But here you can see nice and thick. And again, the bottom is uh, pretty nice and golden brown. Uh, I'll show you in a sec. There it is. 
right there. <laughs> but that was our pizza for the next evening. So good, really delicious. Um, I highly recommend this recipe. And last meal of the week, we are doing French onion chicken noodle casserole again this week because Colin requested it. <laughs> so I will link my previous video or you can check it in the playlist or in my videos list uh, for the recipe. Uh, the recipe will be linked below but if you want to see a step by step I'll show you in those other ones. But there you go. That is our meals of the week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We had a really delicious week so I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>